So you join me and Josh back with our militant. Because no rest no military channel is complete without a wrecker. Everybody's a wrecker to play with. She's not as fancy as the older Mr. Hughes Foden. But I kinda like it. So here she be. She's very much a work in progress. We keep using it, so we never get a chance to actually finish it, but a couple of months ago I cut all the lids off the bins so we can replace them. I cut this bin off and we've made a new one up. So you see that's all loose. Then we go to the other side. I've already made us a new bin here. We've started to weld the hinges on, we need to finish them. We've got a new lid to go on here. And this bottom section here is all brand new. As well as this bit here. So yeah, over the next couple of weeks we're going to finish this off. We want to finish the bins off and make make them usable again. We want to get the hotel oil tank back on so we can use the crane because we've got a Centurion gearbox to lift back in. So we thought we'd uh, do a bit of this on camera. First job is get it in the barn. And I've took the diesel tank off it so I can't start it. Because I'm good like that. A bit short sighted sometimes. So, the mighty forklift, and let's get her in the workshop. Damn train. So let us know if you want to see more videos like this. Let's show you what we're doing. So we're just getting ready now to get it into place. We're just cleaning all the mill skin off the sheet. If you want a half decent weld, you've got to get rid of that sort of scale from when the, the sheet is rolled hot from new. So we shall get rid of all of that. This is the piece that we made, which is the back wall of our bin. You notice she's got this cut out in the middle. That is so you can change and grease and sort out the crane rollers or lift the crane off. Because you pull these plates off, pull out the pin, and take the crane off. So they're important that we keep. That is important that we keep. So we'll lift this up here now and start squaring it up and getting it into the right place. We then have this bit of angle that welds on here to give us a lip for the floor. And what I've done to the back of that is I have given us a bevel on that back edge somewhere that we can weld. Because once we then grind this flat again, I don't want that's a lot of heat to put in here. That's six mil. Same with the floor. 
We got to grind, we need to grind that smooth again afterwards. So I want somewhere to leave and penetrate into and really push some heat in. So first, we'll get that bit there on. This is our bit of angle, which we're gonna need to go here, but we need it two inches back from this front face. Never let Gareth have your tape measure, because then it doesn't go back in. But just wait until he pulls the tape measure out one day. We are at a tape measure wall, and I'm not going to lose. Tap it back this way, the little gentler. And the one, the one. We're getting, we're getting about a sixteenth at a time. Yeah. Done that, right? Yep. What's the full attack there? That's just got a couple of, I missed a bit there, but never mind. Uh, I won't bother the top yet, we shall do that once we uh, get the frame on. Josh, there's a leaf on there on fire. There is. A little bit of packaging. Right, so. Let's get a frame on. We're now just measuring it to get in the right place. But it is so far fitting okay. So we are looking for 22 and a quarter from this back face down here. And we've got that there. We've checked that side and we've got that side. Um, it, when welding this, this is slightly warped in. You can see it's not straight down there. But that's okay, because what we can do is we can start tacking and getting the back tacked in place. Then we can jack this over and just square this edge up. So let's throw some tacks on. I'd call that a tack, my dad would call that a weld. This back now, she's now tacked pretty much in place. We just need to make sure we're upright on this back edge here, and then we need to push this round. You see, it's just a bit of flex there. So we can square that up, but so far, so good. It's where? Uh, to the middle of the world. So to the middle of the world there. There. Now try and let go. Right, so now we have squared up this back edge. I did have to cut that back weld. What happened was, I forgot about this angle, went to weld them on, and then went, oh, I'll weld it up up here. Because we had that long edge sticking upright, it, it warped it. But it's fine, we're back to where we should be. We're happy there. So the next thing we do is gonna offer up the lid. So Josh stays up there, and pans back. I'm going to put the lid up. 
I need to move. I'm in the box. Let me go into this box. <coughs> so, we've gone for Durabar. which is effectively the still, ver the still version of checker plate. Um, it wasn't that originally, it was dimple, which are small little dimples. It isn't as good, it's a lot more slippery. You can't really get it anymore. And you know, we, we use this, you know, technically we use this commercially. She's used day in, day out, engine lifts, towing stuff about, winching. So that's, that's just something that's going to have to change, change the times a little bit. But the other, I've done the other side. I've done the rear quarters. Um, there's only thing really that's not original on her. Is the fact that she's drew a bar on the wear surface at the top. <laughs> The sheet currently has a bow to it, thanks Stanley Stills. Our next job being to work out the lid, and we're just working out where we want the braces. First one being needs to go all the way that way, and a couple going this way. Because only that being the top of the bin, that is also where you stand to get to the crane controls. So we do want we do want that to be fairly strong. So I'll cut that first long one to length. Right, so, our braces are starting to go in and then notched to go into the angle there. So our next one that goes here, he goes at 40. Which is... there so we'll throw a tack there That is all of the braces welded in and bits and pieces. Unfortunately, this thing sat as straight as a dime, did it? It was beautiful. It was still a bit warm when I chucked it up here to see how it goes and the wind's cooled it a bit too fast and it's now a mountain range. Me and Josh, and we chucked it up there. We then decided let's have a, let's have a quick cup of coffee and um, come back to it and disappointed to say the least. We were heartbroken. So we're going to have to change the way we're building the bin now. So we're going to start with, before we weld the lid on, we're going to start with a framework here. Now these bins have a lid that goes on and that butts up against that edge and keeps it watertight. They're recessed in here, two inches. So if I can build this frame up, we can then clamp the top, we can then clamp the top down to it and pull it back straight again. So it's not that we've now started to cut these to 45 degrees. So you've got, yeah, you've got 30 tall, 17 wide, 17 on a return lip. Just got a trusty magnet there holding it in. So we'll get this first bottom one in and then we'll bring you back to the camera again. Not brilliant, but it's there. Yeah. Can you turn the gas on? 
Um, probably not. Right, so we shall now do the uprights in the top bit and join you back when we've done that. So, got this side in. It's all just tacked together for now. And then, because we were hoping to square this one up with the lid. But because we're having to do this now to help pull the lid down and straighten it up, we've had to, a bit of box there, to push this edge over. There's only a couple of mil out, but we, wanted, we needed to square it right up. We've only tacked that on that edge there, so that will just snap off. We haven't got to cut it off or anything. That will break the welds. Josh is just now squaring up this top corner here. But it's starting to look a bit like a bin again. Again, because we haven't got anything left in it, we've just got to make sure we're square top and bottom. Yeah, I shall do one in the corner here again. We're now all tacked into position, so I think we'll offer the bin lid up again. Yeah. And see how we're fitting now. That'll give us a straight edge to reference where, where our bends are and where we're going to have to straighten it. Yeah. You stay there a minute. Hold on. We'll start clamping that down now and work out how we're going to pull it into shape. So we've got our framework now bolted in or welded in which is welded not too badly in most places but you can see where it's bubbled up and you see now Josh has been grinding it out. Now what the trouble is is because of that little lip you can't quite get the welding torch in there so all that bubbling up is because the nozzle doesn't get tight enough in there but you'll now see that i've made i've given him a little little flatten and he now just goes in there enough to get to it that the gas that comes out of the nozzle when you're welding or your gas shield um, that's what stops the, uh, the, the metal as you're welding it reacting with the um, oxygen stuff in the air. And that is what MIG welding is, it, metal inert gas. Although technically, if you want to be pedantic, nine times out of ten, people aren't actually MIG welding, they're mag welding. Because metal active gas, if you're, in any, if you're running any kind of argon shield on a CO2 percentage, technically you're mag welding, because uh, CO2 is active. And the reason you stick CO2 and bits and pieces in is it it helps get way better penetration onto onto steel rather than just pure argon or just helium. Unless you're yeah, unless you're using uh, pure argon or pure helium, you're technically mag welding. But it all gets called MIG welding anyway. You can get narrow nozzles and fine tip nozzles and stuff. I generally just if I needed it in a tight area, I get my hammer out and I smack the nozzle, and I've got a whole collection of different shapes and wonderful sizes. There's a little top tip from Aaron for you. So now we can get our clamp in. We've got our spacer to help set the gap up. I can't hold the camera and get him down. You've got to tilt the, tilt, tilt the back up a little bit then We can just get that in there. That'll just allow us to to do that up a few turns and pull that lid back in straight again. So I'll probably put you on a time lapse now of us just quickly rolling along and doing this edge.
So I've re-welded all that bottom bad weld in here. I can't see the light, but that is all good. Welded down there. We've added the bracket on the back for wood. She takes some planks down here. And we've got the bin lid on. Haven't got the handles on yet, but that opens lovely. So we're now putting this bin on, which is obviously the front to the top of this bin here, which is going to be our shackle storage bin. We've started making some bits to hold our big master links. But when we cut this off, the lorry sucked herself in slightly. When, when she was new, these bins were manufactured when so they were made up and then welded to the chassis, well, the, the chassis of the lorry body. Now we're making these and cutting bits off. They are moving and tweaking slightly, but that's okay because we can mitigate that and bend them back. So I just welded down here and down here and welded this lug on the side with a shackle to a strop to the forklift. Using the hydraulic tilt on the forklift, that is just enough to ease that back slightly, put it back into shape. We're now having to do the same thing again on the lip here. But we'll get that into shape and then we'll show you how this is fitting. This front bin on is also on. We started making brackets to hang our master links. All the different sizes of D shackles. There's some more to go here. We have the grease gun. There's an oil can, and that sort of stuff in there. I mean, originally there wasn't shackle brackets in that bin. All the shackles were thrown into the bottom of a a cage that goes down the other side. But we're making a few changes to her, just to make it easier for us to use. They're all bolt-in brackets, so nothing drastic, nothing's you know, irreversible. Just to make it a bit easier for us, really. You know, we use this thing day in, day out. She's a bit of a workhorse. In fact, she's on an interesting project in a month or so where we're going down to an MOD camp with her. So we've got to get the winch back in for that. That's in about 4,001 pieces. Yes. We never get time to finish her, that's the problem. But this is a big push to get 90% of her done. And then get the doors on, the doors rebuilt properly, and have glass in them because they're windowless. And I found that it doesn't matter where, in what direction you're facing when it rained, it always comes in the driver's window. So, my outro, for some reason, didn't record properly. So, sitting here voicing over this, but here's a video of uh, BB206 coming down. She's coming through the workshop for the next, next week or so. She'll see a video on that. So, if you like what you see, hit the old thumbs up. And uh, if you want to see more, subscribe to us. And maybe consider becoming a member of the channel. We'll see you guys in the next one.